Just another cold summer night. Shit, I mean fall. There's a new plugin upgrade on the block. Some say it may be up to no good. Some have called it great. Others have called it stupid. I don't know, Rob. I smell something funny in there. We need to investigate. What's going on today, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Plugin Police. I'm your host, Massive Upgrader, and today we'll be reviewing Isotope Ozone 10. Not, not we as in me and you. Uh, we as a squad. Me, Steven, and Rob. We'll settle this once and for all. Is it good or is it stupid? Uh, those are the only two options. It can't be anything in between. Ozone is a mastering suite from Isotope. They claim it is the most advanced one on the market, which may actually be true. There's quite a few in-depth modules within it that function pretty well. There are three versions. Elements, which is a pretty nerf version of it. I've never really been a big fan of Isotope Elements. It's $129, but uh, I have a feeling it'll be cheaper than that within a year. You didn't hear that here. But I always see that the Elements plugins drop down to about like $50 or so at some point. So I wouldn't rush to get the Elements version personally at this point in time. Uh, then there's a the standard version. This version isn't bad, but lacks impact and stabilizer modules. Uh, it's $199. And then the advanced version is completely untethered and unhinged. So beware. It's $299. It's $200 off right now, meaning it'll normally be $499, which is pretty hefty. That's pretty hefty. $299 is a little more reasonable. $499. Not so sure. First things first, I'm gonna give my quick opinions on Ozone before jumping into Ozone 10. I use Ozone a bit myself. It's not the only thing in my mastering chain though. He's lying, Ozone 10 is the only thing he uses. In fact, sometimes he just turns up the volume. I just do that with your tracks, Steven. Sometimes to double check, I'll run a mix down through Ozone through the mastering assistant to see if there's anything I missed or if it has any ideas. Usually it doesn't, but you know, it's worth checking, I feel like. Uh, sometimes when I do use the mastering assistant though, I will use the dynamic EQ settings or at least start with those and then tweak it from there. It helps preserve some transparency before hitting the maximizer or when it hits the maximizer, that is. You can do this with any dynamic EQ, but I like using Ozone specifically because uh, it sets itself pretty quickly and it would take a, quite a bit more time to set it with the regular dynamic EQ. I guess you could use a preset. I didn't really think of that until just now. Well, shit, I guess Ozone's useless then. Overall, I felt like the maximizer was pretty good in the past. Uh, a lot of people use Pearl L over that. Uh, I find they're both pretty good personally. They have slightly different sounds. All I'm saying is Pearl L has L in it. The algorithms I do like in the Maximizer would be the IRC4 modern algorithm and also the transient algorithm. Now I feel like quite a few of the other modules are something I don't use as often, such as the master rebalance or the low end focus. Even when I'm fixing a mix down, I don't find them that useful or necessary. The vintage modules are not bad when you're working with something with more of an old school feel. Spoiler alert, it's for boomers. You didn't hear that from me. Okay, now for the new features and my thoughts on them. So the stabilizing module can sculpt the balance sound with an intelligent and adaptive mastering EQ. It has adaptive Adaptive tonal balancing in shape mode and automatic resonance suppression in cut mode. Oh, cut mode. My girlfriend has that. When she tries to stab me, she gets mad. Delta mode allows you to hear the frequencies that are being added or cut. The stabilizer module is only in the advanced version. The stabilizer can be pretty useful, especially in the out of whack mix. I don't find myself using it uh, with very strong settings very often. Generally, I don't need this very much on my own tracks. I do use it in small amounts in some of my mixes though. I can see this being very useful for someone new to mixing and mastering that's trying to get a good balance on their mix, especially that dude, Steven. That dude's deaf. Now the impact module. Again, this one is only for Ozone Advanced. Enhance the rhythm and feel of your tracks by intuitively controlling microdynamics. What the hell are microdynamics? What the hell is a beat competition? That's a callback. If you remember that one, you've been here a while. Pretty sure almost no one's gonna get that reference. If you get that reference, uh, let me know in the comments. It has musical envelope times. It also has a delta mode. The impact module is pretty interesting because it's a combination of multiband compression and expansion, except it's much easier to use or set. Quite, a, I believe there's quite a few multiband compressors. They also do expansion already. I guess the only thing I really like about this one is that it's a lot easier to set than that and faster. Now, is this something you would use on every single mix down? Probably not, especially if it's a good mix already. You probably don't need this. Sometimes as a mastering engineer though, you may need to rescue a bad mix down or even just a decent mix down. And this could be something useful in that scenario. You could just fix it in the mix down, but not everyone always has that luxury. You have the luxury to suck these No. One thing I do appreciate about this is how you can use it to sync to your DAW's BPM and uh, set a musical envelope time. You know, quarter note, eighth note, etc. I do find myself using this a little bit here and there. 
at least with my own tracks, but I definitely would be using it a lot more with other people's tracks if I'm not mixing it beforehand. Okay, now the updated master assistant. This is included with standard and advanced. I'm starting to wonder what, what is actually included with the elements version. Match your song to different genre or reference tracks, tone, dynamics, and width. The repair assistant is great for a beginner as well as advanced producers looking to save time or get a second opinion. Is it always right? Hell no. Is it right quite often? Yeah, I'd say it's in the ballpark here and there. My biggest problem with it is several times, maybe even more than that, I've had it try to put the low frequencies at maximum width. Not sure why it, it tries to do that. It should have a check and balance and be like, hmm, am I setting the low frequencies to 100% width? That's a bad idea. Let's just put it at zero. It should have that. It should fix that itself. Uh, I mean, not a problem for me personally, but I can imagine a new producer, like if they don't know what settings they're messing with, they might accidentally leave it at 100 width on the bass, <laughs> which is hilarious. I think overall it makes pretty decent decisions other than that though. And I think this AI is a lot better than Lander, for instance. Okay, now the soft clip feature in the maximizer. Oh boy. The magnify soft clip boosts loudness while maintaining high fidelity. The intelligent release control modes react to your sound to reduce distortion and pumping. Did you hear that, Steven? Intelligent release control. Intelligent. The maximizer is available in all editions of Ozone. Finally, something good for the Elements versions. It has a light, medium, and hard setting, and it applies a soft clipping and a 4X oversampling. I appreciate this inclusion into the Ozone suite, I always wondered if they would ever add this, and I'm praising God that they finally did. Thank you, Ozone. I mean, thank you, Isotope. I mean, thank you, Soundwide. It's definitely more useful in certain genres than others. Could you do this with any other clipping plugin? Probably, yeah. I think this clipping plugin has a slightly different sound than other clipping, though. It seems a little bit more subtle to me, personally. I think it's interesting how minimal the controls are. Uh, it keeps noobs from setting it in a way that completely destroys the track. You don't want to see what Rob does with G-Clip. Now the Recover Sides module. It reduces width without losing stereo information. When you put something in mono, you may lose some of the stereo information that you uh, once had because of that. This helps bringing that back after making it more narrow. I actually think this is one of the coolest new features, even though it's something pretty subtle, and it's not really something that everyone will always need, but it's something I haven't seen too often, and I do appreciate it. Alright, Apple Silicon support. Windows gang. It'd be nice if they added an amount knob to the dynamic EQ. That's one thing that I always wish that they added that they still haven't added. Now I'll quickly talk about some of the other modules. I think the stereo imager is one of the best you could use. It has great visual information as well as it just sounds good. What, what more is there to say about it? I always thought the exciter module was pretty good in this as well too. I don't think there's anything they could really make better about it at this point though. It does what it's supposed to do and it does a good job at it. One thing I do find interesting is it seems like they got rid of the ability to set your track to a vintage sound when you're doing the master assistant. I believe you could do that in Ozone 9. It's not really a big deal they got rid of it, but it makes me wonder why they got rid of it. It seems like the master assistant doesn't make use of all of these modules. I haven't seen it use the spectral shaper along with the vintage ones. It doesn't seem to use master rebounds or low in focus. Now, is this suite providing something that you couldn't get elsewhere or that you couldn't mostly do in the older versions? No. Other than the upgraded master assistant, I think there isn't a whole lot new to this overall, but is it a bundle of mastering tools you could use to make a really good home master? Yes, especially if you don't know what you're doing as much, although you should at least know a minimal amount. You gotta know how to fix the stereo width when it sets it to 100 on the bass. I mean, this could also rescue some not great mixes as well too. Now I feel like $2.99 is pretty reasonable for the advanced version. If you're paying $4.99 though, not as much, you know, that seems a little expensive. This thing is far from as broken as RX-10 is though. I will say that. It's definitely debatable if it's worth the upgrade for you. It depends how much you use the new tools and what version you're currently on at the moment and how much the master assistant is important to you along with the soft clip module, etc. For these reasons, I give Ozone 10 as an upgrade, a 7.5 out of 10. And overall, I give it an 8.5 out of 10. It's one of the best mastering suites you can get on the market. It's not perfect though. And that's it, we've wrapped up this investigation. It's neither great nor stupid. It's just pretty good. I'm your host, Weaver Beats, the massive hater. And make sure to check out my merch. I just added merch to the merch store. I'm only making like five or six dollars off each piece of merch. I mean, these are pretty high quality shirts. There's literally, there's literally not a single loose thread on these. But make sure to consider joining the Patreon or becoming a YouTube channel member. You get exclusive content as well as early access to my videos, sometimes, not all the time, as well as an exclusive drum kit or melody loop kit once a month. But anyways, I'll see you guys in the next video. Just like any other night, I was smoking my cigarettes and drinking coffee. Then I smelled something funky. He's not actually that massive of a hater. He's actually a pretty sweet guy. He cooks me food and stuff. He keeps me in a cage. He's a nice fellow.